So I wasn't planning on doing this video this week and I found a good deal and I just couldn't pass it up just like you probably shouldn't pass up the sponsor for today. This video is brought to you in part by Enermax. Enermax is a leading manufacturer of high performance PC hardware including their well-built budget-friendly Cyberbron and Marble Bronze series of power supplies along with their new LickMax 3 series AIOs now available in white. For more information, please check out the link in the description below. What's up guys, my name is Juan and you're watching my channel Blueprint PC. So in the last video I did, it was about this guy right here, the GTX 1070 by MSI, and it was an ITX card. And I did that, we talked about how good it is and if it's worth buying, etc., etc. And I was planning on doing an overclocking video on that, but I came across a deal I just really couldn't pass up. With the fact that since the last video I did, GPU prices are still kind of trickling down, people are able to start buying those and you're seeing more stuff hitting the used market which brings me to this guy. It's an Asus 1060, three gigabyte. That's the problem though. It's a three gigabyte. I only paid 80 bucks for it, which is a freaking steal. Even with like the current prices going on, that's a really good price for this card. Now the average going price is about a buck 50. And in this video we're gonna talk about at a buck 50, is it worth it? And if so, why? So let's talk about it. Alrighty, so the GTX 1060. It's not a showstopper. It never really was a showstopper, but it was a good performer when it came out several years ago now. And you gotta remember, we're on 3000, it's not 2000, it's 10 series or 1000 series. So there is a difference between the three gig and the six gig. It's obviously one three gigabytes of memory, which is half what this 1066 gigabyte has. It's also less CUDA cores. The three gig only has 1152, CUDA cores while the six gig comes with 1280. So it's not just a quick, you know, chop off some memory and call it a day. It is a cut down die to some degree. The base clock's the same, the boost clock's the same. Obviously your boost will vary though, depending on the cooler. And this again is an ITX one. So it's going to be restricted a bit when it comes to thermal headroom. And that's kind of a good thing in my opinion, because when I do my benchmarks, I like it to be a little restricted because I want hopefully when you get it with your, your hardware, your specs, your system, you're going to see better performance numbers than what I put out here. Not giving you hopes and dreams. I'm giving you a realistic, Hey, you should get this or hopefully better. Again, this card, they're averaging on sale right now for about 150 bucks. I think that's a fair price. I think realistically, you'd want to spend about a buck 20, buck 30. I think that's a good price for the card for the performance you're getting. So we're going to jump into the benchmarks here. We're going to talk about it more in the end about when you should buy one, if you should buy one, and what the kind of use case is for, you know, if you do decide to buy one. As always, when I do the benchmarks, the games are at their default, low, medium, and high settings. In the game, there's no special tweaking, no tunes, no nightmare, no badass, no very low, no special crazy esports, you know, tournament settings or anything like that. It's just default, low, medium, high. So let's hop into it and we'll talk about it. Alrighty guys, so I'm kind of torn on this one in 110% honesty. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by the benchmarks. Let me put it that way. I 
had low expectations and it's not to disrespect the card or think, oh, hey, the 1060 is bad because it's a very popular card. It's one of the most popular cards in the last five or six years and it does perform rather well. My low expectations were because I constantly pay attention to how much VRAM modern games are using and that's from like you know even then from like 2018 and newer and a lot of them are requesting four gigabytes and more which makes this at three a huge challenge now the benchmarks looked pretty good and some games played perfectly fine and if you're an esports player it's great for that when it comes to like borderlands and watchdogs and even a little bit of tomb raider there was a problem. The VRAM was getting either so close to the max limit or in some cases exceeding the three gig of what the game wanted to use. You, the numbers look good, but the playability wasn't quite there. Especially Watch Dogs and Borderlands were constantly trying to use up more memory than what was available. And you'll see like really long frame times, stuttering or just like pop in where things are like finally loading in when you're moving through something. So, that's what makes this difficult. If you're an esports only player, this is a great freaking card for just that. If you're doing like your basic Rocket League, you know, Rainbow Six Siege played fine, you know, CSGO, stuff like that, all the now older titles, it can handle, you know, with relative ease and give you really decent frame rates. If you're looking at anything new, any kind of AAA title or anything of that nature, you're going to have challenges and you're probably going to not have a really pleasant experience when gaming. So I can't recommend it for that. And I can't recommend it for VR either because VR needs a lot of VRAM and this doesn't have it to offer. And it's kind of why I'm torn. Like I said, you're, you're getting these around 150 bucks average pricing. I think that's too much. 120, 130, I think is a fair price. And you know, it might be worth that aspect. Again, if you have like a really old card and you're trying to step up for that, um, or if you just want like a second rig for streaming off of, or maybe a starter rig for a kid or a friend or somebody who just needs something very basic to, you know, just get them, you know, get their, hit the ground running and get the ball rolling. Um, I wanted to do this video because like I found this one, the guy just got a 3060 because the prices came down with a reasonable amount and he had this that he was selling off. So I hopped on him like, you know what, let me get that. And you're going to see a lot of 1060s, 1050s, 1050Ti's, 1070s even hitting the market soon where people are finally upgrading now that prices have come down so much. And you're going to see that probably happening for the next year or so if prices stay the same or even get better. So if you come across these, just think about that. Try to find the 6 gig. Try to either get a 1070. Maybe that'd be a better option because I still love the 1070. I think that's a great card for, you know, what it is. Again, mind you, for a reasonable price. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm genuinely torn. I don't know if this is something that should be retired at this point in time, or you know if it's still just a specific use case card like esports, maybe a LAN rig. You know, if if people are still doing LAN rigs in the the land after you know what happened, um, it might be a viable option for that to build a cheap LAN rig and have something to you know play some games with some buddies. But outside of that, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm Genuinely curious as to what everybody thinks about this card and what you saw in those benchmarks today. So outside of that, if you liked it, hit the like button. If you found something useful, hit the like button also. But if you'd like to see more crappy videos from me, please hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one.